thank you for another opportunity to glorify yes. your son, Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, welcome, BLC. Amen. Good morning. Can we give the Lord a hand?
Break every.
thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we worship the Trinity today, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Father, we need you today, God. We need you, oh God. We don't want to leave the same way we came today, God. Yes. Jesus. We want to be friends. Be changed. 
appreciative of the presence of each and every one of you. What day is this? This is the day. And I will rejoice. And I'll let nothing, nobody, disturb my peace of mind. Hey, look, wait a minute. Have you had to try that last week? More than once? <laughs> Three times? Amen, 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 amen. I just want to, don't keep throwing it up in my face. Amen, amen. God bless you. Amen, amen. Just to, uh, to, re to re reiterate uh, the choir's announcement, um, just to reinforce, I might have overheard. Uh, you are excused from rehearsal if you have to work. Right? If you have to work Thursday evening and can't make it to rehearsal, right, you get a pass. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, okay, yeah, if you're a member, right? Of the, if, if you're a member of the choir, right? And you have to work Thursday evenings, right? But now, that's only part A of it. Now, there's a, a what? Private what? No, no, uh, don't you have to go online? You have to go online. You have to learn the words of the song. Now, I don't know if it helps you keep your note. Oh, ooh, oh, Lord. Okay, you need to go online. You need to practice. Look, now, Minister uh, Williams, he knows when you go online. So don't go online Sunday morning. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> Uh-uh. He knows. All right, this is the honor system, right? So, matter of fact, if when do you put when do you put the words online? Thursday. Thursday. It's a live rehearsal. So, Thursday, Friday, maybe? You no, Saturday. Well, you mm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as soon as possible, <laughs> go online, learn the words of the songs, your note, amen, amen. So don't come up here like we look and say, no, your mouth not really the same as, the... amen. So, so God bless, because uh, we know those that have a passion, amen, and a talent, they want to be a part, but, yeah, but you need that job too. Amen. Amen. So uh, you go to work, and if, if that's your passion and desire to be in the choir, talk to uh, uh, Minister Jerome Williams. Amen. And, oh, and it's President, I'm sorry. And President Alicia, stand up, Sister President. Amen. Have a talk with them, and uh, we can work it out. Amen. Amen, amen. I just want uh, to introduce a friend of mine, amen, Pastor C.W. Parker and his first lady, Angie Parker. Amen. Back there, they're, they're incognito, okay? They on the under, but I need to recognize this brother here, amen, amen. They're about to share 30 years of marriage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. We're going to continue uh, walking through the book of Acts. Amen. Amen. We have, uh, we're going to, we're going to go to Acts, the fifth chapter. We're going to read verse one through ten in the New American Standard. Then we're going to jump over to First Timothy, the sixth chapter of verse ten, the King James. I love that King James. It kind of flows. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue walking in the book of Acts. Amen. We left off at Acts, the fourth chapter, at the uh, 31st verse a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to continue to walk through the book 
of Acts. We're going to walk through the book. Amen? Amen. Just like when we read the scripture, we walk through the scripture. Amen? Amen. So what am I saying? There's some commas, colons, semicolons, periods. As a matter of fact, there's some question marks. Amen? Take your time as we walk through the text. Amen? Amen. Amen. Acts, the fifth chapter. Amen. Verses 1 through 10. Amen. From the New American Standard Bible. Amen. <clears throat> when you there, say amen. 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 So, amen. We have a two characters. It's a very familiar story here in this history book. Ananias and Sapphira. Sapphira. Amen. When you there, say Amen. Let's read in unison Acts 5, verses 1 through 10. And it says, But a man named Ananias and his wife of But Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie the Holy Spirit? Hmm. But to God. Ananias fell down. Amen. Let's go. Chapter 6, verse 10. This is the King James Version. your prayers with a book a heart problem you may be seated a heart problem a heart problem father god we come in the precious name of jesus lord we come just as we are torn tattered some come pressing their way, running their way to you, Lord. But Lord, here we are again. Lord, you said if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just. You will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But Lord, here we are again. We want to come before your presence, Lord. So we ask, Lord, you create in us a clean heart. Would you renew a right spirit within us? And Lord, we just want to say thank you for waking us up this morning. You didn't have to do it. Giving us a reasonable portion of health and strength. 
You are our provider, Jehovah Jireh. And Lord, if we wanted to eat, there was food in our cupboards. Thank you, Lord, for clothing us in our right minds. With a mind, with a desire to come to worship you. Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. Realizing, Lord, and we ask that you will receive our worship. Please, Lord. Lord, we're praying for those in hospital rooms, those in convalescent, Lord. Praying for the bereaved family, those behind prison bars. Touch Holy Spirit. Remind them you said you would never leave them nor forsake them. Lord, touch marriages right now. Touch and remind. Marriage still works. Touch families. Touch finances. Lord, help us to be good stewards of what you have given us. Realize they don't belong to us. Help us, Lord. Lord, I pray for every household represented here this morning. Thank you, your omniscient God. You know omnipresent you there here there you're everywhere at the same time omnipotent God you got all power heaven and earth is in your hands Lord so here we are Lord we come before your presence Lord we ask that your will would be done in us Please, Lord, just be pleasing in your sight that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we continue in the book of Acts, we know that Acts is a history book. And we have gone on at the beginning of the church day of Pentecost where the church was born amen and we like when they were assembled in the upper room and the Holy Spirit came and filled the room and filled everyone in that room and we know to be filled means that the Holy Spirit has control over you so he had his way in that room and with those that were in that room. And, and, and as they went on, that Peter and John, amen, they began to preach. And we know 5,000 men believed and came. They, they began and with the power of the Holy Spirit, they went by a beautiful gate. And there was a lame man laying at the gate. And they had an encounter with Peter and John and Peter said silver and gold have I none but this I do have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth get up and walk and it was by the power of God that came through Peter and to that man and he leaped had strength in his legs he started leaping. He started dancing. He, he started praising God. Amen. And, and when he got the victory, he went to church. <laughs> he went to church. Like when you get your breakthrough, you go to church. You get a blessing, you go to church. Thank you, Sister Shay. But he went on into the temple, amen, and, and folks in the temple are sitting there wondering, who, isn't that the one that laid at the gate that was lame from his mother's wound over 40 years? Isn't that him? And he in there praising God. And then as the story went on and they went outside the temple past the gate to Solomon's porch. Amen. And there's a group of folks, a uh, group of uh, saddest Sadducees. <laughs> they met them out there. Now, they had a problem with Peter and John for preaching the resurrection. 
See, they didn't believe in the resurrection. And they said, look, don't be preaching that, Jesus. We don't want to hear that. Amen. But the hour was late, so they threw them in prison. Amen. And they went to them because it was such a crowd outside saying, free Peter, free John. Now, they had a conversation with Peter and John. They said, look here, we're going to let y'all go, but we ain't through with you. We're going to let y'all go, but don't go out preaching that name. They released Peter and John the next morning, and the Bible says they went back to the assembly of the other believers because they was there praying for them. Huh? The believers, amen, the assembly. They went back to the church, and they told everything that went on with the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin Council. And then the people start praying. They came together collectively of one heart and start praying. Amen. And, and, and they begin to pray. Now back at that 31st verse, and it said when they had prayed, the place where they were gathered, it began to shake. See, it, it's nothing like, you know, having your individual prayers. Amen. And, and Bible study. But it's nothing like when believers come together. When we, the, you know, the church is built on prayer. But when we all come together and pray, cause, see, because sometimes, you know, I don't feel like praying, but you can pray and you can uplift me. And there's some things you can say in your prayer. I'll be like, oh, boy, yes. Amen. And somebody else says, oh, yes. Amen. Oh, oh hallelujah. Amen. And we come together on one accord. And it said it began to shake. The begin, building began to shake and was filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, if the church ever come together. They came together. And they began to speak the word of God with boldness. It takes the feeling of the Holy Spirit to stand on the word and preach the word with boldness. You ain't worried about what somebody got to say. So the story goes on. And then it says, now look, this is verse 32. The congregation that believe, this is what I, they were of one heart and one soul. Meaning they were all on one accord. Amen. And, and, say, and they said not one of them claimed that anything belonged to him was his own. But all things were common property to them. Amen. Say it again, brother. They were all on. Where, where you going? See that baby in there. That might be the only amen I'm going to get. Oh, don't take that baby out of here. That means there's life in the church. Don't take that baby out of here. A lot of rest of y'all sitting here all tight. Ain't said nothing. Don't wave. Don't. Amen. I need a amen. Oh, Lord have mercy. That means there's life. Ooh. Lord, don't let me even be in the church full of old folk. <laughs> Come on now. Come on, this life. Okay, y'all mess, mess me. Look, look, look. They had all things in common. Amen. Amen. And, and, and look, look, this is what I loved about it. There was not one person in the church that was needy. Look at verse 34. I'm looking. And there was not a needy person among them, for all who were owners of land and houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sale. They would bring them together and lay them at the apostles' feet. Oh, I wish somebody hear me. I believe the word of God. If God said if we ever get on one accord, one mind, one heart, we don't need to be selling no chicken dinners, no fish dinners, amen, no fashion show, no comedy show, no fireworks show. Come on, everybody. 
So you got where the baby at? If we do it God's way, paying tithes and giving offering. Tithing is in the New Testament too. But if we just get on one accord, no one would be needing of anything. I believe God's word. Okay, okay. And then there was a man by the name of, of uh, Barnabas, an impossible. Now, he sold his land. And he brought the money. He brought it. Watch out, Shay. He brought it all to the apostles' feet, laid it at the apostles' feet. Let, let, I, I got to always go there. His land made was more valuable than somebody else's land. It don't matter. He brought it together. What I'm trying to say, your tidy may be different from their tide, but you bring it together. God is not looking at the amount. He's looking at your heart. There's a heart problem in the church. Okay, okay, okay. And they went on, and they went, and now in the fifth chapter, fifth chapter, verse one. Look, look the first word there. Everything. What? What is it? But when you see that conjunction, I mean. Every Thing was just fine. Nobody was in need. We're praising God. We're worshiping the Holy Spirit. He's having his way. Then, but. A man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira. Sage went on and sold him. Y'all know the story, right? Y'all know the story? Okay. There's many different viewpoints of this story. I bet you if I get four or five preachers up there and preach this text, all of it will be different. Some might say in this text it's about greed. Some may say it's about a lack of integrity. And some may say it's about being selfish. Some might say it's about hypocrisy. See, she's going to say it's like lying. But I want to tell you this. This is not about money. It's a heart problem. Not only is it a heart problem, it's an attitude problem. They kept back some of the, pro some of the money for themselves. And his wife knew all about it. Husband and wife, they knew, you know, okay, I'm going to stand with boldness. It, it'd be kind of like uh, you, you, the Bible said we should pay tithes and give offering. Pay tithes, give offering. Pay tithes, give an offering of your increase. So why would the wife say, you pay the tithes and offering, I'm going to keep mine. She knew, he knew, and guess who else knew? Oh, yes, he knows. And it said, and they kept back some, his wife, full knowledge. There was a text there. I didn't just say wife, it's because to be picking on nobody. The wife had full knowledge, bringing a portion of it. That means they kept some back. And Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie? I'm at verse 3. You lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land. And that verse 4 says, and, and while now he asked him a question. Now look, while it remained unsold, did it not still belong to you? Hmm. And after you sold it, didn't it still belong to you? So why is it 
that you have conceived this deed in your heart. Okay, see, I had to say that because first he said Satan filled your heart. Right? You see that? In verse 3. But now he said, why is it you conceived this deed in your heart? You. So what are we saying right there? Can I just put a pencil right there? The devil can't make you do nothing. So we need to stop lifting him up. He can't tempt you just like he tempted Jesus with material things. He will tempt you, but he cannot make you do anything. Just like the Holy Spirit is not going to make you do anything. You must yield to the Holy Spirit. God ain't going to make you do nothing. But look, he said, look, you have not lied to me, but you lied to God. Well, and often, you know, when you look at the study, what made them lie? Huh, maybe a lack of faith, maybe. Maybe, you know, the, you know how we get sometimes, uh, you know, you get the money, the preacher, the pastor going to buy a new black Mercedes. Right? I ain't going to be giving them my money. They don't know what, what they doing with it. Huh? Oh, uh, God will take care of us. Why I got to be giving it to them? If I'm going to, see, I can't just give it to the church. Here, I'll give it to this department. I'll give it to that. I, I'm going to delegate. Maybe it could have been just greed. It's my money. And I'm not giving it to God. Why did they lie? Well, good question. Why do you lie? Oh, come on. Come on now. Come on. I'm going to edit and turn the camera off. No, no, no. So since you, you ain't never told a lie. We're just family. Come on. Why do you do what you do? You ain't never held back. Let me tell you something. There's four types of people in the church. Those that pay their tithes and give an offering. Those that pay a tithe and don't give an offering. Those that give an offering and don't tithe. And those that don't give nothing. Lord, fill me with the Holy Spirit that I can speak the word of God with boldness. Careful what you ask for. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Check this out. They didn't have to do it. It was theirs. They didn't have to give. This was voluntary. Nobody put no gun in their head. Why did they have to do that? You could have just kept your look. Let me tell you something. God don't need our money. He don't. God does not need your money. He wants your heart. He wants your heart that when this word goes out and when you read this word and when you are convicted, you say, Lord, I'm sorry. He wants your heart. He wants your heart. He's our father. And when you know you're not living right, when you know you're not acting right, that you come to say, Father, here I am. Sorry. No, the devil didn't make me do it. She didn't make me do it either. The pastor didn't make me do it. I lied. I robbed you. And I've been stealing from you.
it said, the text said, why did you lie? If you resist the devil, he will flee. And the other part is this, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Because that's what I like in that fifth verse. It said, when he heard these words, and and I heard the word, when you hear the word of God, and you know you ain't doing right, it ought to convict you. Your heart ought to tremble. Lord, I'm sorry. If we confess our sins, he promised, he promised that he'll forgive of us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, create it. That's why my prayer daily, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. You know, God chastens who he loves. Death is a part of chastening. He will move you. Okay, wait, all right, all right, all right, man. Wait, wait. You constantly, okay, wait, wait. Why did Ananias Sapphire do this? One, I believe they saw what Barnabas did. You know how we get. Somebody do something good. Ooh-wee, come patting them on the back. And you see that? Ooh, I'm going to do that too. Don't let nobody, Minister Love, don't nobody, let that nobody come in here praying real strong. I'm going to do that too. Hold on, don't let nobody come in singing real good, CJ. But it's something about God's grace. And he forgives us. He, he has grace, unmerited favor over our lives. And he is so patient with us. Like I said, in why in his wife came in with the same lie. Three hours later. It's a heart. That's why, I go to First Timothy. It's an attitude issue here. Now, First Timothy 6.10, people don't go to church know that verse. <laughs> oh, they know that. Oh, they, they, oh, they know that one. All right. And, and even people in the church, we know it. Oh, oh, oh if you want to teach a Bible class, well, they'll teach that one. Uh, for the love of money. Ooh, see, see that? It ain't money, and it's not money. That's what I'm saying. This is not about money. Right? It's the love of money. It is that attitude there. It is that heart issue. It is the love of money, root of evil. But see, you know what? We stop right there. It's, it was you say some more. The issue, like I said, the heart problem is the attitude is this, which some covet after. We covet after stuff that don't belong to us. Oh, don't get sleepy. I'm almost there. We covet after stuff. Don't covet means you have a desire, you have a heart for stuff that don't belong to you. Okay, let me give you a little illustration. A little illustration. Check this out. It was a little boy, right? And uh, his papa, he said, come here, come here, come here. His papa gave him a silver dollar. He said, ooh, I got a silver dollar. Right. And, 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 and then his daddy saw what his papa did. He said, here, here I'm going to give you a cow. He gave him a cow, right? And, and then, then his mama saw that. She said, here, I'm going to give you a hen, 
So he had a silver dollar, a cow, and a hen. Right? Say amen. You understand what I'm saying? So guess what? So he's outside with his buddies, right? Talking about, ooh, look what I got. I got a new Mercedes. Look at my house. Look at my job. Look at my 401. I mean, oh, I'm sorry. Look, look at the silver dollar. Look, look at the cow I have. Look at the hen. Look at me. Look at all I got. And see, Granny was sitting at the window. And she said, come in here, boy. Matter of fact, when you come in and get my Bible, she said, told him, turn to Haggai. She said, turn to Haggai, the second chapter. She said, turn to Haggai, the second chapter, verse 8. And look what it said. Y'all read it. The little boy said, well, that goes my silver. That goes my silver dollar. She said, yeah. She said, okay. She said, okay. Go to Psalms 50. She said, go to Psalms 50, verse 10. She turned the Bible. What, what did it say? Oh, that goes my cow. I done lost my silver dollar in my cow. So she said, go, stay in Psalms 50 and, and go to verse 11 to read that. Uh, that that go on my hand. And then she went on saying, wait, wait a minute, I ain't finished with you. Go to 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verse 19 and 20. Now don't y'all, y'all take your time and read this. What does it say? Verse 20. Huh? Oh, that, that was plain, wasn't it? You don't even belong to you. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, and all the inhabitants that dwell with you don't belong to you. Matter of fact, he owns you twice. Creation and redemption. Jesus redeemed you on the cross. He paid the price for you. It's a heart problem.